to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Who's a candidate to be baptized? That's the question that we want to consider in this series of lessons on baptism. Are you ready to be baptized? Is a person, is any person who just seems to know the facts ready to be baptized? What does it mean to be ready to obey the gospel and submit to God in baptism? Thank you for joining us today for our study on this series of lessons on baptism. Specifically, we're thinking about today who is a candidate? Who's ready to be baptized? Again, we're so glad that you've joined us. Today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether that be on Sunday morning or Wednesday evening for Bible study, Sunday night for services. You would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love the truth, who more than anything want to help people go to heaven. And so we encourage you to visit the Lord's Church in your local area. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your journey to know God and His will better. If you'd like to have a copy of any of our lessons, they're all available from our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have lessons on every book of the Old Testament and New Testament, wide variety of topical studies like our series on baptism today. And you can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. Go to our media request form. The easiest way would be to give you a digital download of that. You can download it for your device or your computer, or if you need a DVD or CD, we can make that available to you as well. And so we hope that you'll check out the good material we have. Be great opportunity in helping you in your Bible study. And then, of course, we encourage you to check us out on Facebook. Don't forget as well, the Gospel of Christ app, available in the Android and Apple stores. Great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing. Stay caught up on it in our fast-paced world today. We're thinking about the question today. Who is a candidate to be baptized? Who's ready to obey God's plan of salvation culminating in baptism? Is any person who just walks in off the street ready? Is someone who's maybe involved in things that are not right, can they just be baptized? Someone who is involved in a life of sin, can we just take that person and baptize them? Does just knowing the facts alone make you ready? Well, what does a person need to do to be ready to obey the gospel? And, and we talk about this subject because it's true that sometimes People who are not candidates to obey the gospel have actually been baptized, and that does more harm if they don't truly aren't truly ready and don't know what they need to know. For example, a child, a very young child, may have seen his brother or sister who was mature and who was ready to obey the gospel, and because of the excitement, maybe because of the encouragement of the church and his parents, they decide they want to do that as well. Does that mean they're ready to obey the gospel? A young person sees other young people at a camp or at a youth rally or some event respond to the gospel, and he wants that same adoration or praise or maybe feels like he needs to. And he, is he ready necessarily to do that? A husband, maybe because his wife is a child of God and has been encouraging, would really like to see him do that, and maybe has even put a little pressure on him, and so a husband decides to do that to make his wife happy. Is that really a good candidate 
for baptism. We want to consider today some questions that I hope will remind us that there are things we need to do. There are things we need to think through. We need to know the right things, be mature enough, and, and really count the cost before we're ready to be baptized. Such things as, what is faith? Do I really have biblical type of faith? I'm not talking about just knowing the facts and being able to put the verses with those facts, but have those facts and that understanding of the evidence created that type of faith that causes me to, to make a real commitment and count the cost when I do that. Do we understand what baptism is? Why we're being baptized? What kind of a commitment? What kind of relationship that we're actually entering into? Do we know what it really means to repent? We're not just talking about shedding a few tears. And we're not just talking about feeling sorry that you did something bad. Repentance is way more than just crying and feeling sorrow. Do we have an intent in our life to be different, to live different than we used to live, to live different than the world lives? And do we understand what baptism does for the child of God. You know, as we think about these ideas, we ask ourselves things like, do I realize that I have sinned? Do I, do I realize the consequences of that sin? Do, do I really understand what sin is? Have a full grasp of that? And do I understand the consequences that that, that brings to my life? Do I realize what Jesus did for me? On the cross, do I understand the personal nature of Jesus dying on the cross for me? Am I really willing to count the cost to obeying the gospel? I may lose friends. I may lose people who are close to me. I may have to give up on certain things. There are certain things that I can't do or watch or be a part of anymore. Have we really counted the cost as we ought to as a child of God? Those are things that we all have to think about as we prepare to obey the gospel. And so as we think today about who is ready, who is a candidate to be baptized, we would say that the first qualification, the first thing that a person needs is a certain level of maturity in obeying the gospel. Let me illustrate. Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. Our relationship to the Lord is that of like a wife to a husband, a bride to a groom. We are the bride, Christ is the church, and it's like it's a, a marriage relationship. And of course, we understand, along with that illustration, that not, not everybody's ready to be married, right? Uh, if someone is not physically ready to be married, hasn't reached that level in the physical development of their body, well, they're just not ready to do that. But more than just that, do they have the, do they have the maturity? Do, do they have the fortitude? Do they have the stick in itness that they're not going to give up? Um, think about it like this. You wouldn't let just anybody drive your car, would you? If you had a car, would you let just anybody drive that car? Well, of course not. You would want them to be responsible. You would want them to know how to drive. You would want them to have insurance. You'd want them to make good decisions and, and count the cost every time they get behind the wheel of that. Think about entering the army. Not everybody's ready to enter the army. It's a big decision. It requires a conflict. It requires a discipline, self-discipline. It requires working out and being in good shape and a level of maturity and knowledge and putting all that together. Remember what we're trying to say is, to be a candidate to obey the gospel, there needs to be a certain level of maturity. Some young kid, four, five, six years old, they haven't reached, likely they haven't reached that level of maturity to really grasp the consequences and the gravity of the decision they're entering into. They need to have the ability to understand that. Um, is that person... When one obeys the gospel, they need to be ready to be faithful unto death. Are you ready to die for the Lord if your faith depends on it? That's a tough question for anybody. 
But you need to have a certain level of maturity to do that. Revelation 2 verse 10 says, Be faithful until death, and I'll give you the crown of life. Are, are, are we willing, even in the face of death and adversity and tribulation and trouble and, and peer pressure, to really have that maturity to do that? Do we understand that if we don't live like God expects us to live, that we could be withdrawn from, according to the Bible, 1 Corinthians 5, that we could be counted as an infidel for not living like God wants us to live? A second question we would ask is, is the person accountable? And by that we mean this. There's a time in a person's life when he doesn't need to be saved because he's safe. He's not reached the age, the maturity, the understanding of accountability. How do we know that? And let me illustrate it from a couple of passages for you. Ezekiel chapter 28 reminds us of the idea of how children, especially young children, are made upright and pure, and until sin enters their life, they, they don't need to get caught up in the things that the world often gets caught up in, and they don't really need to obey the gospel until they realize they're accountable for that. Ezekiel 28 verse 15, God said to the king of Tyre, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, listen to this adverb of time now, until iniquity was found in you. There's a point in time where the child doesn't know right and wrong. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 14 through 16. Uh, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. Why? Of such is the kingdom of heaven. What's Jesus talking about? There's a time when a person is innocent, is pure, is not accountable, and is in a safe state. Someone who's in that state, although they may be learning, although they may be growing, we need to help that person realize you don't need to rush that decision in the state that you're in. And I, we're not talking about an age here. And I understand, depending on the circumstances and level of maturity, that may be different for everyone, but for especially young children. Let's help them to see. Give yourself time to, 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 to reach that age of accountability. Don't rush that decision. Be learning and growing and reach that level where you are accountable. Now, as it relates to being safe, in the age of accountability, adults reach that age of accountability. Though Those who know good and evil, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 30 and 31. Though, those who can understand and have uh, a sense of realizing the gravity of the choices they make, we are accountable. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10 says, Each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Whether We'll give an account for the things done in the body, whether good or or evil. And so one of the first things outside of just the simple idea of being mature enough to make that really serious decision, let's not rush someone into a decision who's not accountable. Let's teach them, let's encourage them, but let's also help them reach that level where they know good and evil and they can make that decision without pressure on their own. And so what, what the next question we did ask out for, outside of, are you mature enough? Is the person mature enough? Have they reached the age of accountability would be, do you understand and do you know what you need to know? Just bringing somebody in off the street and putting them in a baptistry doesn't really know anything. All that did was get that person wet. The Bible teaches that knowledge is something you've got to have. You've got to know the right things before you can be a candidate to be baptized. Listen to the words of Jesus in John 8, 31 and 32. Jesus said, if you continue in my words, you are my disciples indeed. And notice this, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Knowing and understanding is a prerequisite and precedes, goes before one can obey the gospel. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 5, 17, do not be ignorant, but understand. Understand the will of the Lord. Now, we are not saying 
that you have to know every fact. We're not saying that you've got to know every verse and every fact and you can't not understand it. That's, that's not the idea. But we're talking about basic things a person needs to know to be saved. For example, does, this, do you, does a person know, do you realize you're lost in sin? But if a person doesn't understand they're lost in sin, they're not a candidate to be baptized. Why would you be baptized if you don't even know that you're lost in sin and you're outside of Jesus Christ? You see, the Bible teaches there's none righteous. Romans 3 verse 10. Of those of an accountable age, there's none righteous. Romans 3 verse 10. The Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23, and the soul who sins will surely die. And we're not talking about hard matters here. If a person is of an accountable age, he knows right and wrong. He knows he sinned. He feels the guilt and the sting of that sin and the death that comes with it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 following. And so do we realize we're lost in sin? Sometimes I wonder about this. We talk to somebody and they make the decision to obey the gospel and they're going to wait two or three days later till everybody can be there. Well, do we really understand the seriousness of it? Do we really understand the urgency of it? They took them the same hour of the night. There was a sense of which we would need to get this done now and right now if you understand, not something you want to put off till next year, next week, or some other time. If, if we are, really understand we're lost and how serious that is, it's something you want to take care of once you realize that. Do we realize the consequences of our sin and of obeying the gospel? Do I realize that if I remain in this state, I'm going to be lost eternally forever? That I will be separated from God from here on out? Do I realize how horrible that place called hell will be? That, that God is not going to be there, that good people are not going to be there, and that it is unending. It's a serious matter to understand these type of things. Do, 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 do we understand the plan of salvation? And do we realize the importance of the Lord's church in that plan? For example, does one realize that he's got to hear the word of God? Meaning, not that you accept anything that you hear, but that you scrutinize everything you hear by the Word of God. Acts 17, 11. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, the Bereans, in that they searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Have we been searching our Bible, making sure what we're hearing is right, and looking to the Word of God as our authority? Do we really believe? I'm not talking about just two plus two is four believed, knowing the facts. I'm talking about do we really, are we really making a faith-based commitment to the truth? I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He's the only way. I'm ready to follow Him. I'm ready to live for Him. I'll die for Him. If I have, are we really ready to put that faith not just up here into knowledge, but also into action, to obey what God says in every way. Do, you, do we understand repentance? Do we realize that repentance isn't just shedding big crocodile tears? Do we realize that repentance is not just feeling sorry for sin? 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 says, Godly sorrow produces repentance. Godly sorrow is not repentance, but it produces repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is when we turn from wrong and turn to God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, or excuse me, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, verse 9, it is said of the Thessalonians, they turn from idols to God to serve the true and living God. And so there was a 180 degree turn in their life. They left, they turned their back on idolatry, and they turned in the direction of God. It isn't enough to stop doing wrong. Repentance means we're also going to start every day trying to do that which is right. Now, am I saying that we're going to be perfect? And do we want to say you can never sin again? That's not the idea. 
We all make mistakes. Nobody claims perfection, but we want to strive for to be the best we can be in every way. And then, as we mentioned, do we understand God's plan of salvation as it relates to uh, baptism? Do we realize that baptism is essential to salvation? Mark chapter 16, verse 16. It's not something you do two weeks later after you're saved. I think sometimes people apply knowledge they learn later to a baptism they had years ago. And again, friend, I would just ask, does the scripture teach that works? Did Jesus not say, you first know the truth, then the truth makes you free? You've got to understand and know what you're doing before you do that. Again, that's a pivotal part of God's plan of salvation is not just doing it, but understanding what God teaches about it and why we do that. And now a final thing, as we think about someone being a candidate for baptism, maybe they've got the right maturity. Maybe they uh, are of the age of accountability and they do understand the right things. Are they willing to count the cost? Anything that's really valuable usually has some type of cost involved in it. There is nothing greater and nothing more valuable in all the world than obeying the gospel, the truth, and, and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But there is a cost to that. I want you to open your Bible to Luke chapter 14. And Jesus here teaches us as part of the prerequisites, the things that are necessary before one is baptized, you've got to count the cost of what you're doing. Have we really counted the cost. Look at Luke chapter 14 and notice what the scripture says beginning in verse number 25. Now great multitudes went after Jesus and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And now Jesus illustrates that. Which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000, or else while the other is still a great ways off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. In this context, Jesus is not teaching it's wrong to have family, to love. That, that, that's not the idea. He's got to come first. Above every family member, above every decision, above everything you want in this life, are you counting the cost of putting Jesus above everything, above your friendships, above your passions, above people in this life, above your pride and above world? And will you let the Lord Will you count the cost of what it really means to be a Christian? Most people are sure, I'll count the cost. Will you count the cost when people don't love you anymore because you're a Christian? Will you count the cost when you have to suffer for your moral values as a Christian? Will you count the cost when your lifestyle has to be lived different than other people's lifestyle and you have to take a moral stand on that? Do we, are we really prepared to count the cost of being a Christian? Do we really understand that Christianity, it's going to cost us something? Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Will you count the cost of denying yourself? Are you going to take up that cross every day and follow Jesus? And so we would consider these four things as we think about Who's a candidate for baptism? Number one, do they have the right level of maturity? Are they willing to understand the gravity, the seriousness of the decision that they're making? Along with the maturity, do they have an accountable mind? There are some people, because of 
uh, things that may have happened in life never reach that place, who had some type of mental problem or something may never reach that place. Uh, there are those who are too young at a point to reach that place then. They're not of an accountable age uh, right yet, but they, may, they will be sooner. Do we have the right, do we know the right things? Can't just take somebody and dunk them underwater. They've got to know the truth before the truth sets them free. And then that fourth thing, are they willing to count the cost? Are you willing to really consider how this is going to change your life? How this is going to affect you and everybody around you? And will you stay true to the Lord no matter what? And so we ask today, are you a candidate for baptism? If you have that maturity level and you, you know you're of an accountable age, you understand what you need to do and you're willing to count the cost, and friend, we encourage you to obey God, to do what God wants you to do, to submit to Jesus' teaching on salvation. If you recognize he's the way, the truth, and the life, and that you're willing to make a, a, a commitment to him in faith every day to walk in his footsteps, and friend, are you willing to turn from a life of sin? The evil, the wrong, the things we've done in our life, when we turn our back on that, and when we turn in the direction of God, would you confess him as your Lord and Savior? Uh, the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Would you say that with your mouth? Romans 10, verse 10. And then, my friend, to have every sin washed away, to get into Christ and to be saved. Would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Peter later said, Baptism does now also save us. Mark 16, 16, 1 Peter 3, verse 21. And so if you do realize all this, then friend, we kindly say, we kindly say to you what Ananias said to Saul of Tarsus. Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more on the subject of baptism. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.